It's the NFL on EA Sports, and the wait is over for this rivalry game. It's the Cleveland Browns and the Pittsburgh Steelers, next on Madden Football. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the World Steel Capital of the City of Bridges, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Akershire Stadium. Today, it's an AFC North matchup between the Cleveland Browns and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. Cade York has this one teed up, and we are underway from Pittsburgh. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. So here are the Steelers now to take over for the first time. They'll be led out by the rookie who played his college ball for the Pitt Panthers, so that's Kenny Pickett. And when you watch Kenny Pickett play, you see a young man who got better every season in college and really blossomed in his final campaign. Took his game to a new level and made him a first-round pick in the NFL. He's the type of kid who can beat you with his mind, beat you with his arm, and occasionally with his legs. A tough, skilled performer. Can he pick it? He's got some moxie to him. And here's Pickett to put it in the air off the bat. They'll get this to his tight end. That's Pat Fryermuth. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 14 yards there on the first play from scrimmage. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense. And guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. A first carry for Najee Harris. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Now you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. He's going to air one out. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete. So the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Not the desired outcome, but probably won't be the last time we see him take a shot downfield. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Trying to pick it up on the ground with Harris. 
And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. We all love to have a home run hitter in the backfield. Guy can take it the distance. Got a short yardage, trying to pick up first downs. That big guy, always a nice luxury to have, isn't he? Play action, pick it. That swung out wide to Harris. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. On second down, this is Harris. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. He'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft, and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Now play number seven of the drive as they're looking at a third and ten. Back to throw, pick it. And this one is incomplete. Well, that's one way you take away a first down as a defender. Make sure you have a little bit of physical play when the ball gets to the receiver. Find a way to jostle it free. They caught him off guard, force the incompletion. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. This will be spotted just shy of midfield, a 59-yard attempt. And that is no good. Oh, he missed it just wide of the upright, and this will remain a scoreless game. Partner doesn't seem like it, but that's a tough spot for a kicker. First drive of the game, and they're calling on it. He should be warmed up. He should be into the game, but sometimes... It's almost like, oh, what, now already? Can't they put it in the end zone? What's going on here? Yeah, he's probably saying, if you can't get it in the end zone, can you give me a 30, 40-yarder? <laughs> a long one, and he can't connect. So they tried the 59-yarder and missed it, and now this offense starts just one yard shy of midfield. They start on the ground with Nick Chubb, and forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. An awful lot of congestion in the middle third of the field, but how about our defensive tackle right there? He didn't just hold the line. He provided some push and smacked the ball carrier down for a loss. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Back to throw, Watson. That's caught by the tight end, Harrison Bryant. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. And the Steelers now in the nickel here on third down. Now Watson. And that is incomplete. How about this defense? They came up with a couple big plays in this sequence, and none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. On fourth down, on is Corey Bohorquez to punt. And back deep, Gunnar Olszewski. And now a low liner. I think he mishit him. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. 
Well, last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, get this a little time? Closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. He's going to look deep down the field. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. This is Harris on the draw. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. He may be a bit undersized compared to the modern-day NFL defensive tackle, but what he lacks in size, he definitely makes up for in his ability to make tackles in the run game as well. Throwing on third down. Here's Pickett. Open man here is Gentry. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. That'll go for a gain of seven. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. Down. Here's Presley Harvin on to punt. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two yard line. And he's got to be fired up about that effort. I don't think he could have walked down and placed it any better than where he ended up putting the football. That was excellent. Second drive coming up here for Cleveland as they return to the field on offense. And they will begin with, should we call it, far from ideal starting field position, their own two-yard line. So what's your definition of ideal? The one-yard line on the other side of the field. Yes, exactly right. So yes, your definition is apropos in this case. From the end zone, Watson. Throw left side, caught by the tight end, Njoku. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. They go with Chubb on second down. And he'll get this to the 22. So they began the play at the 11, and it's a gain of 11. First down. That's good for a Cleveland first down, an 11-yard pickup. We're scoreless after one. The start of the second quarter, and it's the Browns in control of the football. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. They run again on first down. Chubb, no gain on the play there, second down. Defensively, though, they had a chance there to hit him for a loss. Couldn't get it done. Looked like someone was able to knife into the backfield, but he wasn't able to get him down. But his compatriots, they were able to grab him at the line of scrimmage and not let him get any further downfield. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. Watson. He's got his receiver, Cooper. And he'll take this to the other side of midfield before going out of bounds. A gain there of 30 big ones. This offense has been slow to get started, but that play will certainly give them a little bit of life. Maybe the late wake-up call that they had been seeking. Good job, 
to the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10 off of play action it's Watson he's going to drop this one down for Chubb and a six yard gain gets him right around the 43. Line of scrimmage, the 43 on second and four. Now it's Watson. He's got Najoku over the middle. And he's going to be taken down just shy of the 35. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Again, it's Watson. Right back to Njoku. And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. They really love to get him into one-on-one -on -one opportunities, and this is one way, work him out of the slot and create a mismatch. Who's going to cover him? Corner, safety, linebacker? He's got a way to beat all of those positions. Watson off play action. That's out to Chubb complete. And he'll be brought down at the 27. The defense is ready for the back to leak out and even had a second player waiting to double him up. If you're going to commit to doubling a back, you better prevent a completion. But give him credit. Extra determination, extra effort. Turn it into a successful play. Watson to throw on third and one. That's complete to Peoples-Jones. And he is going to have a Browns first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. From the red zone now, Watson. To the sideline, wow, what a catch. Doesn't get a lot out of it, but he is able to keep the feet in bounds. The result, only four yards there on the play, and it'll be second down. That was a nice throw out there to the flat, but they defended that pretty well. The hope is to go ahead and put it on him so he can turn and get upfield and gain additional yardage. There just wasn't anywhere to go on that play. Watson looks to throw again. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build them. Touchdown, Browns! Deshaun Watson on target to David Njoku. And the Browns go 98 yards and finish it off in the end zone. A good tight end is a heck of a weapon for any quarterback, especially when you're able to create some mismatches. Sometimes they work against a linebacker. Sometimes they work against a smaller defensive back. But when they find it, they go to it, and it often results in touchdowns. Now Cade York for the extra point. It's up and through to make it 7 nothing Browns. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. He sends this one away. 
And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They'll be looking to match that touchdown from a moment ago. 7-0 is the score as they begin with a first down. Pick it now on first down. It's brought in by Harris. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Pickett will look to throw it here. Incomplete. Second quarter action with 1.59 remaining. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. He's got his tight end Fryermuth right side. Now the Browns will use the first of their three timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. On is Presley Harvin now as he'll send this one away. And here's a very low line drive, almost whiffed on it. Not good at all. Punt of just 24 yards there. And the Browns will take over first and 10. Heading out as the Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. Things progressing to plan so far. Their defense has been solid, and they've got themselves a 7-0 lead after the touchdown the last time they had the ball. And this is no time to even think about, hey, are we going to milk the clock? Hey, are we just going to do ball control? This is the NFL. 7-0 leads, they don't last very long unless you continue to push the envelope on offense. On first down, it's Watson. He's gotten a Joku, his big tight end. It'll go down as a gain of six, and that will bring up second down. That's a staple of this offense, drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. From just shy of midfield, Watson. This is the tight end to Joku. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. There's a good push to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. Speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. First and ten, Watson. And that's going to be caught by Peoples-Jones. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. That's interference. Defense. So obviously they will decline the penalty there, and the result is six points. That penalty is declined.
New York now for the extra point. And it's good to make it 14-0. The drive there only spanning three plays. And it's capped off by the Browns' touchdown. York ready, and here we go as he sends this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Steelers taking over now late in this first half. And with a little under a minute remaining, they may try to put something together here just to try to cut into that deficit. Pick it to throw on first down. And he's taken down. This will be a Brown sack. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as the clock shows 50 seconds to play here in half number one. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. On the delay, here's Harris. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. Now another timeout called for by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. He gets it complete to Harris. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 12 yards that time at a Pittsburgh first. When you struggle out of offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you're doing like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. Now the Steelers are going to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. On first and 10, it's Pickett. Finding Harris on back-to-back -back plays. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. So we come upon halftime with our score 14 to nothing. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. First things first, let's get a check on the next-gen stats from that first half for the Browns. And their offense has been in top form so far, especially their passing game, as it's helped push them out to this big halftime lead. And meanwhile, for the Steelers, they did not have quite the same amount of success in the passing game that their counterparts did, as you get a look at the numbers there. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Fine work, as always, as we welcome you back for quarter number three.
The Browns are going to get the second half kickoff, and they've got this lead as well as we are back and underway. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The Browns offense getting set to go to work here to start the third. Watson and the Browns now with a first and 10 at their 25 yard line. Here's Watson. Wide open, Amari Cooper. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40 yard line. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. A give running right is Chubb. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. And that's what this defense is going to need to do more in the second half. Good pressure that time, forces some indecision in the backfield. He's going to wind up being taken down for a nice loss. So after the loss of a yard, they'll look to push forward here on second down and 11. Now flags will come in. I think this one's going to be on the defense for jumping. A little antsy on the left side of the line. Yeah, I think they got the guy in the end. I think they got the DN there on that one. And let's face it, he is so amped up. Wanting to get a good get off on the snap jump too quickly and now they face a second and six after the penalty here's Watson swings this out for Hunt and they'll get him down on the other side of midfield set here defensively on third and inches. Still want to be prepared for a pass. To throw is Watson. And he'll hit the slant route. That's caught by Cooper. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 39. They only needed one yard on third down. They get 10 instead by going to the air. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. On first down, Watson. And his throw is incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive. But a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. A second and ten forthcoming here. Third quarter action in the Steel City of Pittsburgh, PA. To the air yet again, Watson. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. This has certainly been a physical game so far. Limited scoring opportunities for both sides. And there's another chance that goes unfulfilled. Now the terrible towels in full force now as the Steelers get set to defend this third and long. Throwing on third down, Watson. To the left side and complete for Amari Cooper. 
And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 17-yard line. A gain of 22. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going, and right now it's paying off with big chunks of yardage as shown by that last play. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Up the middle, it's Chubb. And they'll get him down right around the 16. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. From the 16, Watson drops it off for Chubb. And down inside the 10 here before he's out of bounds right around the 7. That leads us to a first and goal. It's a pickup of 8. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. First carry now for Kareem Hunt. They give him five that time as they draw a bit closer here for a second and goal. It's larger been the air attack that's gotten them down here, but now is where you start to lean on that running game. That's a good pickup there on first and goal. Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. Now, here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. Now we've got third and goal coming up, and couldn't you imagine being in our little partner? You know they're looking at each other saying, we can't come away with just three points after this drive. Yeah, they've covered a lot of ground. They want more than that three. Another shot here from the two as they come up on third and goal. Now Watson. Under pressure now, and he's going to go down. Sack back around the eight. Montrevious Adams in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that will lead to fourth down. Defense went three-four. They got some push from the inside. And this is something in a three-four you don't normally get because the nose tackle who got the sack, he's usually responsible or ends up getting double-teamed and sometimes triple-teamed. How about him working his way back and putting the big guy on the ground? Now Watson will step away, and out comes Kate York to handle this fourth down field goal try for the Browns. This from 25 yards out. York able to send this one through, and that will extend their lead even further. Well, I don't know if they would have gone for it on fourth and goal anyway, but the sack on third down pretty much made their mind up for them. You're exactly right about that, and this is a tough place on the field to take a sack because, as you just noted, it took the decision making away from them. Now they have to go for a field goal instead of potentially going for it. New York ready and here we go as he sends this one away. Taken at the 15, a short kick. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. Time for the Steelers' offense now to get set for their first possession of half number two. Pickett leads the Steelers up here with a fresh set of downs at their own 28-yard line. First and 10, here's Pickett. Flushed out right, and he'll just get rid of it. I'm sure it was a tough halftime trying to figure out some strategy to get things going, trailing by a lot when they went into the locker room. He's just trying every avenue to spark his team here to begin the third quarter. 
Not a lot going on on that play, though. So now they'll come up on second and 10, once again from the 28. Looking to throw, pick it. He gets it left side to Johnson. And he's going to be out up around the 45-yard line. Holding offense. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. A run with Harris out of the shotgun. And he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one. Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here's Pickett. And that will be incomplete. Well, obviously searching for their first touchdown this game, partner. And that quick three and out, that's not going to achieve that at all. Give victory to the secondary there. They brought out tight coverage on that third down snap. The Steelers send out their punter now as he's on to kick it away. Fielded at the 20. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And they will take over first and 10. The Browns drive about to get started. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. Your three scores to the good. What's your approach on this drive? Too early to fully commit to playing the clock game. Yet at the same time, you're also not going pell-mell like you would two-minute offense. This is what NFL offense is called four-minute football. Take the clock out of the game a little bit, wind it down, but at the same time, keep advancing the ball down the field. Three quarters have come and gone. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Pittsburgh. It's the Browns football, and they've got the lead here as we start quarter number four. They go up the middle with Chubb, and he'll be brought down right around the 37. Seven yards there and a first down. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. And again, it's Chubb. And he's got some space here. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. 44 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. Well, they've certainly been successful throwing it around in this game. That's allowed them to move the ball on offense. But I've got to tell you, to watch them run the football and successfully, I'm not taking sides. But to see the ball in the running back's hands, oh, that's football for me. Operating out of Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 35-yard line. Handoff up the middle. Hunt down to about the 32. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Well, I'd second down right back to Hunt. And only able to get two here, stopped at the 30. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. The offense on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This will be third and five. Now it's Watson. He's got his tight end, David Njoku. 
And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 19. It's a gain of 11 yards that time, and it produces a new set of downs. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. From the red zone now, Watson. And he slides and covers up at the end. This is going to be able to pick up decent yardage. The impact on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. I like how he hung in there and went through his progressions, but eventually his internal clock went off and told him it was time to make a run for it, and he ends up sliding down with a solid gain. And they'll try to squeeze in one more play here before the two-minute warning. Again, Watson to keep it. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. Down under two minutes to go in this football game. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They've got it first and goal in a game that appears to have already been decided. They'll try to run with Hunt. And he takes this one in for a Brown score. Kareem Hunt punching it in from a yard away as his guys are able to push that lead out a bit further. Is it okay if I break one of our rules, partner, which is to never call a game over until it's over? Because this certainly feels like it's over after that drive. Yeah, that was spirit crushing, wasn't it? And now you, can, you just kind of felt the air go out of the balloon. Yeah, they were fighting so hard to stay in there, and they knew they had to stop them on that drive. But when they were unable to, and I think you're exactly right. You could see them sag on their sideline. And I think this one might just be over. The York on now for the extra point. And the lead is now 24. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And Kareem Hunt, the one to finish it off, as he did so with a touchdown run. York ready, and here we go as he sends this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Well, it's been a struggle so far for this offense, Charles. It's not only that they haven't been able to put the points up, but really stringing yards together has been a real issue for them in this one. I'm so glad you brought up the yardage because I was thinking to myself, We've seen a lot of NFL games, and we've seen our share of lopsided contests. But in almost all of them, both offenses have put up at least 200 yards in a game, but not in this one. This has been a display of offense that, frankly, I think the two of us have watched from behind our hands, trying to spread our fingers wide enough to actually see the result. But despite the completion, they're going to wind up losing three there. Second down. Got to give some credit there defensively. They snuffed out that screen early on first down. Really read it well, didn't they? Because they didn't bring the pressure that they expected. They covered all the passing lanes. So once you see a breakdown as the passer, I think in this situation, you're throwing it at the feet of your back to make sure no one picks it off, or you throw it away. Throw it over the sideline. Don't try and freelance and try and make a bigger play. There's really no one else running a pattern that should be open. And on third down, the Browns going to go with a nickel set. Back to throw, pick it. 
That ball caught by the former Toledo Rocket, Deontay Johnson. And he will have a Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. And he's going to be taken down. Plus, there's a penalty flag in the backfield. They may get 15 more on top of this. I'm trying to understand. I just can't. I'm trying to understand. And that flag's on Miles Garrett, and we know he's got a nose for getting after the quarterback, but that time, even though he's going to protest it a little bit, he's a step late, and they hit him with the penalty. Dialing up another pass here, Pickett. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. Drop for a loss of seven by multiple defenders. And you hate to say it with a rookie quarterback. He's done some good things, but overall, Looked a little bit overwhelmed back there, hasn't he? He certainly has. But in his defense, he hadn't had a lot of time to throw the football. You like the way I said that? In his defense. In his defense. I got it. You yeah. see what I did there? Yeah. He okay. needs better protection, that's for sure. They got walk that walk, baby. He's one of the cat pen, baby. That's how we eat. Let's go. Let's go right there. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Pickett will look to throw it here. Harris has it over the middle. And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. And that was yardage that they needed there after the sack on first down. They didn't get all of it back. But now they look at third down as a manageable situation, one that they have a much better chance of picking up. Try him with Pickett here on third down. Here's Johnson with a reception. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns' 18. That one good for 14 yards and a Steeler first. So Cleveland able to come away with the victory here. And this was truly a total team effort, Charles, on both sides of the ball. Well, they absolutely pitched a shutout, so it can't get much better than that, right? The defense led the way, but the offense did their part as well. They moved the ball up and down the field. So you've got to like what you saw. What do they call that? A total team effort? I think when it's time to hand out game balls, guys from both sides will end up getting one. 